Hey guys, Sarah Duma here to talk about hitchhiking. As a solo female, I have hitchhiked all over the world and I've had very positive experiences. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my personal tips to help you stay safe. To over 75 countries and I've had a lot of different hitchhiking experiences. I mean I've hitchhiked in cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, horse-drawn drawn carts and uh, even an airplane once in Costa Rica. You might think hitchhiking is dangerous. I'm never going to hitchhike anywhere. Well, if you're going to be doing an American long distance trail like the Pacific Crest Trail or the Appalachian Trail, hitchhiking is almost a necessity for resupply. And even if you're on a different type of trail like the Camino de Santiago, unexpected things can happen as you're walking. Like, uh, what if you get injured and you can't make it to civilization? You're going to need some help to get to town. So um, it's even if you don't never plan on hitchhiking, it's a very good idea to have some idea what to do uh, in case of emergency. So you've made the decision to hitchhike. Before you start, you wanna take the valuables out of your backpack and put them on your person. So this is like your wallet and your cell phone because when the vehicle comes, your pack may be placed in the back seat away from you or in the trunk or in the bed of a truck. So if something happens to that pack, uh, I've, heard, I've heard legends of hikers getting their packs stolen by pickup trucks, but I don't know anyone personally that this has happened to. But in case the worst of the worst happens, you have your valuables with you. Okay, so you're ready to hitch and you wanna stand on the side of the road, stand tall, look confident, big smile, light it up, and stick that thumb out. Um, you see a car starting to pull over, you got them on the line, you're reeling them in, and now it's your job to decide if you're gonna throw them back or you're gonna keep them. So as the car is pulling up, I always try to take a look at the back bumper because I'm taking a quick mental snapshot of the license plate and I'm looking at their bumper stickers. If you see some trail friendly stuff like a PCT sticker, uh, then that's a good sign because that means that they're probably a member of the outdoor community and is perhaps a hiker just like you and may have given hikers rides before. So this isn't their first rodeo. If you see some weird stuff stuck on the back of that bumper, you know, uh, yeah, use, use some caution there. So cars pulling up, uh, you don't wanna just open the door and jump in. First, you need to have a brief conversation. Uh, so when it, the car comes and the window goes down or I open the door, I take a look at the interior. What is inside? I look at the items in there. Is this a work truck? Uh, is there empty vodka bottles everywhere? Or And uh, what kind of passengers are inside? If it's like uh, a car full of dudes uh, or one single dude, you might wanna take a bit of caution. If, it, if there's uh, ladies in the car or children or it's a family or a couple, then that's, that's, that's more of a green flag that this may be a safer choice. Okay, so um, you've ta taken a look at the interior. You're still, you're still thinking, yeah, I might take a ride with this person. Now you wanna ask the driver some questions. The first question to ask is, hey, where, where are you heading? And um, because you want them to tell you where they're actually going because uh, you want to make sure they're going the right way and you don't want to say hey I'm heading to uh, Toronto and the guy say oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm going there no 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 you want to make sure that this was their original plan okay and if they answer something like I'm heading anywhere you're going darling eh, red flag red flag okay that this driver might be a problem <laughs> okay so if they're going the right way, great, wonderful. Uh, the next step is to introduce yourself and ask them your name. So I'll say something like, hi, great, my name is Sarah, what's your name? If there's any hesitation on them giving you their name, that is a red flag. If you see them kind of like searching in their head, like, oh, should I give a name? Should I make up a name? What should I do? Don't get in that car. 
because if this is a genuine friendly person, they are going to give you their name without any kind of hesitation or second thought. What if you need to decline the ride? For example, the driver was slightly slurring words and you might suspect that they're drunk or uh, you just get some really bad vibes off of them. You want to, uh, as a solo woman, bring up that there is a male companion around you. So I would make up an excuse such as, oh, my father is, is coming up the trail and uh, he should be here very soon. So I think I'm gonna stick around and wait for him. Or if you don't wanna use father, you can use husband or you can use son. Some kind of, kind of really strong sounding male authority figure that if this driver was a bad apple, would give a second thought and think, okay, maybe this woman isn't the easy target victim I originally I originally thought when I saw her on the side of the road. If the driver is insistent and says, ah, oh, no problem, I have time, I'll wait around for whoever to come, this is when you start to back up, put some distance between you and the car and be very firm and say, no, thank you anyways, you go ahead. And then, then you go, you make your way back onto the trail and out of sight of the road and then you wait for that vehicle to leave before coming back out to hitch again. You've gotten into the vehicle. What you want to do is you want to have your cell phone with you and turn on your GPS so you can see as the car is driving that you're going in the right direction. This is also helpful if the person driving doesn't know exactly where you want to be dropped off and you can give them directions. Uh, and it's good to have your cell phone in your hand because if something bad happens, then you can quickly make an emergency call. If there is something very bad going on, then you can discreetly call 911. You don't, you don't have to talk. You just have your phone on with 911 listening, okay? Uh, in the car uh, for the conversation, you want to uh, be friendly and engaging. Uh, a lot of people are very, very uh, curious about what you're doing out there. And uh, also, if it is a really bad apple, they're less likely to harm somebody that they have gotten to know. If the driver is a male and you're a female and they're start just starting to, to get the vibes, maybe they have a romantic interest in you, you want to drop that you are in a relationship casually in the conversation. And even better, mention that in town, that partner from the relationship is waiting for you. So you're expected. You would be missed if you did not arrive at a particular point. If in the car, things are going south and you want to leave the vehicle, you ask the driver to pull over and say you forgot something back and you'll hitchhike back the other way. And if the driver says, oh, I'll just drive you back, you say, no, please, I don't wanna bother you, just let me out of the car now. And if the driver is still insisting, then you get more firm and less polite and say, let me out of this car now. If the driver is still not pulling over, you are in a dangerous situation. Okay, you need to act fast because if this guy, if this guy is uh, kidnapping you, you have better chances uh, before he gets to the intended destination wherever he wants to take you. And and this is just this is just what I I'm, I'm going to go into autopilot and do. This has never happened to me, but in in these situations, I'm mentally prepared to do these things in case they do. So, what you want to do is try and cause a traffic accident with another vehicle on the road. Grab the steering wheel and you, you hit a car or you um, push down on the gas pedal to hit another car in front or you push down on the brake to um, have a car hit you from behind. Because even if he speeds off, the other, the other vehicle is gonna be like, what the heck and reporting it to police. I'd rather be in a traffic accident than be kidnapped by a random dude. So that's, that's something to think about. Uh, another option is to use your hand, reach down and firmly grab, grab the balls, you know, firmly grab the balls. 
give him a lot of pain and say, you stop this car right now. And you don't let off until the car is stopped, your seatbelt is off, and the door is open. Then you let go of the balls and you get out of there and you flag down a car, you get, you get help as best as you can. But hitchhiking is very, very, very safe. If you trust your gut and you use your intuition before you get yourself into a bad situation. And if you are really, really worried about hitchhiking alone, then you wait for someone else to hitch with because there are those safety in numbers. Hope this video ha is going to be helpful for some people. Uh, you can let me know in the comments below if, if it is or if it isn't or you have any other kind of tips. Um, otherwise, thanks for subscribing and if you want to support this channel, you can head on over to my Patreon and check it out. Thanks a lot, guys.